and welcome back to another episode of Brian ignores his responsibilities to work on his truck. Uh, the truck in question, 2022 Ford Bronco, and the responsibilities I'm ignoring is cutting my lawn. So that'll have to wait. Uh, but today it's uh, finally time to install the subwoofer. Let's get going. Okay, in case you haven't been following along, um, what I've done so far is replace all of the factory speakers with Kicker KS series speakers. Um, and then after that, I installed a Kicker Key 200.4 amplifier. That helped a lot. And then in the most recent video, I installed, or I didn't install, I tweaked some settings around using Force In. So links to all those videos are up in the corner if you wanna watch them. The last thing on the list subwoofer amplifier. There's a couple tactics you can use to install a sub in your Bronco. The first is the traditional sub box you stick in your cargo area. Uh, I didn't like that idea because I want cargo space. Um, the second is a, something called a hideaway sub. Those typically get installed underneath your seats. Uh, I vetoed that idea because I bought the washout interior on my Badlands and I actually you know want to be able to wash out the interior. Uh, the third way I've seen is putting a big old subwoofer on the tailgate. If you want a big subwoofer, that's probably the way to go, but I don't need that much sub, and I also want to install other stuff here. Um, and then the last way I've seen is to install it right here in the quarter panel. And that is where the B&O system is installed. So I can actually steal parts, which I've done, so what those cardboard boxes are over there, from the B&O Broncos uh, to achieve what I need to do. Um, but first, obviously, Got to rip out all the trim pieces. So let's get to it. Okay. Trim tools. So I'm guessing I got to take these out first. There's one. Two. And then probably, let's loosen that. 10 millimeter, I'm guessing. Yep. I need like a uh, thing to hold stuff. Hi, glove box. Cool. Cool, so now this panel's gotta come out. Trim tool. Nice. Okay, so now you guys got to move. Okay, now this whole thing should pop out now, right? There we go. Cool. Okay, so now um, this has to come out. How does this work? How does that work? Let's go find out. I'm not seeing, I'm definitely not seeing screws. So it's gotta be clips. So let's just give it a good tug. There we go. And the other side. I 
There we go. Done. Cool, and there's the wiring harness. That's awesome. I didn't know that was there. All right, now for the panel itself. And I bet you it's a ton of clips. This entire thing is one gigantic trim piece. And except for this piece right here. But that means I'm gonna have to, that means I'm gonna have to probably take out the seats. I hope not. No, I don't have to. But I do have to take out this. I'm gonna have to take out this too. Okay, let me go figure this out. All right, progress update. Got it all figured out. Now, obviously a lot of this only applies to the four-door Bronco. Uh, so if you have a two-door Bronco and you know what you're doing here, uh, like snap a few pictures and make a post to Bronco Nation or Bronco 6G. I guarantee you, you will help out a lot of people. These plastic clips are, are annoying as heck. They're really easy to break. So if you just show people where the clips are, that, that goes a long ways. All right, let's go. So first thing that comes out is this guy. This is just a clip or two back here. And another one should be right here. There we go. There we go. Done. So two right there, two in the middle, two on the end. There's also a little dinky plastic clip that grabs into the corner right here. So you have to pry that off. Next up is the B pillar stuff. Okay, these, these front trim pieces I took out in my speaker install video. So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check it out. Uh, this, this wire tray down here is gonna be used for the subwoofer cable, which is right here. Okay, one, two, and then there's two in the back. One, two, and then now for the ones up top. Okay, so this is gonna be hard to see, but I'm gonna start at the top and just work my way down. Actually, you know what, monkey, get out of the way. What I gotta do on the other side is just like shove my hand down here as I went along. So let's do that out of the way. Oh, I ripped that one off too. What the heck? Why are these clips ripping off? They're all ripping off. These clips suck. Well, at least they're not breaking. They're not breaking. All right. Now for the one on the bottom that gave me so much grief on the other side. Ow. Okay, that one actually came off. Cool. Done. So here's what's happening. I know this is gonna be hard to see because it's black on black, but these these plastic tabs here, they have metal clips on them. And on many of these plastic tabs, the metal clips are just ripping off the plastic and they're still in the B pillar itself. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to get those clips out, get them back on the plastic before I reinstall it, but we'll worry about that later. For now, we got a clear path for the wire, which is good. Okay, so I think we're at a point now where we can remove this guy. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit because I actually bought this panel. And I'm gonna look and see where the clips are. All right. There's the panel. Let's see where the clips are. 
Okay, so I think the game plan now is just to work your way around the edge of this panel. I'm going to use my new panel as a reference, and I'll stick you guys on top of the bucket while I do it. And there. Now there's two up top, I believe. So let's follow that. There we go. Two. Oh, 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 oh man. Okay. Let me look at the panel. Alright, so there's a clip right there. Got it. And then it's like a weird goofy thing down here. I don't know what to make of that. Oh, already taken care of. Okay. The bottom's all loose. Now I guess we just work. Ooh, okay, got another one. All right, so there's one up here, which I think I already got, and there's another one over here. <laughs> Sounds like I got it. Now, these guys sound like I need to pry these up. All right, I got one of those off. Hmm. Nope, definitely the other side. Yeah. yeah. You're gonna go find worms? Yeah. Okay. The mailman's here? Yeah. Cool. Got it. Alright, so there's this little trim piece that came out from behind the, the pillar here. Just to show you from this angle. So this this little this little trim piece right here was back behind the pillar. I just used uh, this edge to pop it off. That was pretty easy. Uh, and then I popped all these orange ones out. You can see over there, there's one, two, three orange ones. So we're good there. So the last one is this clip on the bottom. And I am having a heck of a time with it, to be honest with you. So what am I doing wrong here? Maybe I need a different tool. There we go. Cool. Now, I'm expecting to there to be wiring harnesses here, so I don't want to rip on those. There's going to be a wiring harness for this light and this outlet, and then there's also uh, an antenna, whatever a heck a KV antenna is, I don't know. But that's going to be back there too, so we'll have to be cognizant of that. I thought I already got you. Uh, is there another one I missed? What am I missing? Oh, I didn't do that one. Okay. Oh, come on. Ow, you jerk. There we go. Cool. Alright, so there's our KV antenna, whatever the heck that is. Alright, this looks easy. Uh, Alright. Alright, I had to mentally reset myself from ripping off panel mode to messing with delicate wire mode. So, these need to pop off. There's that. Perfect. Now this one, I can tell you just squeeze and it should wiggle itself out. Maybe. Or, you know, maybe not. This one, okay, that one you just push down and pull. Perfect. That was easy. This one. Come on, let's get a poking device. All right, a poking device. Come on, just work with me, please. I just want you to come up.
dudes. What the heck? Why is this being stupid? Where's my Leatherman? No, no, not there. What the fudge sickle? All right. Oh, there it is. 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 How's your thing doing? It's going well. Oh, this is cool. What's this? That's what? Fish. Just a second. That's on the bottom. <laughs> What's what thing on the bottom? That's the bottom of the truck. Cool. What's it doing here? I thought this was not here before. What's it doing there? Yeah. Well, the bottom of the truck's always there. This thing is a pain in the booty. I'm trying to get this stupid connector out. But it's kicking my butt. Oh yeah, I see it. Excuse me. Yeah, I see what you mean. <laughs> Ooh, this is fluffy. And fluffy, I love this fluffy. <laughs> it's so fluffy, I can't handle it. He's so fluffy, I'm gonna die. You don't have to worry, everyone. I am gonna get this. I will get this. It's just a matter of time, you see? I just have to get pissed enough and it will come out. <clears throat> Ow, mother. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> I scratched it. But that's okay, I got it out. <laughs> I win. What are you stuck on now? You will come out. I have beamed the... Oh, it's just a seatbelt. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, beautiful. Alright. We're out. There's the old panel. I'm kind of surprised it has this, this sound deadening, but it's there. And the new one that I bought. And now that I'm looking at these side by side, I think I'm going to have to be honest with uh, both myself and you guys and saying that purchasing this panel, uh, it was not worth it. So that panel cost close to $500, if not a little bit more. I'm guessing it was so expensive because of this antenna, you know, and the other electronics, and the fact that it's just a gigantic plastic panel. I was expecting more of a difference, if I'm being honest with you. Um, but it was not worth it. I think the better solution would just be to, these are just like plastic, melted plastic rivets. So I think it would have been more intelligent just to drill these out with a Dremel or something like that. Take off this cubby, you know, go to Home Depot Lowe's and buy some metal or plastic screen mesh and then stick it in this cavity here that that would have been um, it probably would have looked just as good and it definitely would have cost a whole lot less but um, oh well now you don't have to make the same mistake I did but you know if you feel like lighting money on fire like I did I'll put the part number for this panel down in the description cool let's talk about wiring shall we <coughs> all right so if you have a 2021 or a 2022 like me, your base audio system looks like this. Um, four channels out of the ACM. Two of your speakers, your front kick panels and your front dash speakers share the same channel. If you wanted to add an amplifier to your base audio setup like I have a couple videos ago, it would probably look something like this. Um, you'll have all four channels from the ACM get sent into your amplifier, which in my case is the Kicker Key 200.4. You can use a wide variety of amplifiers. And then out of your amplifier, you will feed all four of your channels, which will in turn feed all six of your speakers. If you have a 2023 Bronco, you got lucky because Ford decided to add a subwoofer to your base audio system, uh, which is huge. Other than that, it's unchanged though. Four channels out of the ACM feeds your six speakers. 
but you do have a subwoofer with an amplifier involved. Now, unfortunately, Ford screwed the pooch, and in December 2022, they announced they didn't have enough components to give everybody an amplifier. So most people who got a 2023 Bronco, and if you have one, this is probably the case for you, uh, they did not get a real amplifier or a real sub. They got fake empty shells of amplifiers and subs. It's just like the amplifier is, the box is there, but the internals are blank. If you got the subwoofer, it looks like a subwoofer, but it's not. There's no coil. It doesn't do anything. So that sucks. But the good news is, is that all of the wiring is still there, which means you can still use it. The subwoofer enclosure is there, which is great, because all you got to do is buy a subwoofer and plop it in. Um, the amplifier mount is still there. A lot of people have been using Ford Fusion amplifiers. And it's, if you use a Ford Fusion amplifier, it's just a plug and play sort of thing. Um, but if you want, you could also use an aftermarket amplifier and an aftermarket sub of your choice. It's all the wiring is there. You just, you know, cut the ends off, wire it into your new amplifier and you're good to go. Now, if you wanted to do what I did with the rest of my speakers, adding an amplifier to this is pretty easy. Your audio control module feeds an external amplifier up here. This external amplifier then feeds all four of your speaker channels. So you can see if you have a 2023 Bronco, it's really not too bad. Uh, at the very most, the hardest thing you will have to do is run power for your new subwoofer amplifier if you decide to go with a higher wattage amplifier. But everything else is ready to go for you. It's, it's not too bad at all. Now, for those of you who have a 2021 and 2022, like I do, the obvious question is, how do you feed the signal for your subwoofer amplifier? Because this red cable here does not exist in our Broncos. If we take off that trim piece in the cargo area, it's blank. There's no cabling, there's no enclosure, we get nothing. So where do we get the signal for our subwoofer? And the answer to that question is that we have to steal it from the first two channels of the ACM. So I have achieved this with a plug and play kit, um, but of course you can wire it yourself or some amplifiers also have a line out to that you can use. There's, you know, a bunch of different options, but essentially what you have to do is you have to steal two of your output channels. In my case, I'm sending it through a load resistor, which cleans up the signal and makes it appropriate for the subwoofer amplifier and then send that to the back of the vehicle for the subwoofer. So unfortunately for you 21 and 22 people, uh, you're in the same camp I am. It's not quite as easy as it is for the 2023 Bronco owners, but it's not too bad. Um, so let me show you what I got. So again, if you have a 2023, you're set with a sub enclosure. For those of us with a 2022 or 2021, you need a sub enclosure. I have chosen to get the uh, B&O sub. right there let's unpack it so here it is now you may be wondering why you have a speaker in there already you can't buy this enclosure without the speaker you have to buy it as a complete set um, i did measure the connectors and this, the sub does have two voice coils both four ohm which is kind of surprising um, and then right here on these four corners here that is where the factory dsp connects and I'm going to make an adapter bracket to put the 500.1 amplifier in there. So the plan right now is just to plug in the B&O sub as is. It's a dual coil, it's 4 ohm, it might be really good, I don't know. One of the things I learned about the kick panel speakers up front is that the factory ones are good, so why spend the money on an aftermarket if you don't have to? Now, I did make a mistake, and I did buy a subwoofer. This was before I realized that you had to buy the subwoofer with the enclosure. My fault, didn't do my homework. The good news is, is that there's lots of 2023 owners out there that need a speaker. So I should be able to recover most of my cost uh, just by selling this on the Bronco forms. All right, let's get the enclosure installed. So it mounts in four spots. There's these squares here and then these posts. For the squares, you pop in these capture nuts, part number down in the description. 
Here's the screws for them. And then for these, I believe these are, well, I bought M8s, but they don't look like M8s, I'll be honest. So, I might have to go to the hardware store. All right. Let's see if what I got works. Nope. All right. So those are probably M6s. Anyway, for these, these should just pop right in. One, two, cool. Let's make sure these actually thread in here. These are huge. I don't think they need to be that long. Okay. fully torqued down because I gotta get new nuts and I also am gonna have to take this off again to build the bracket for the subwoofer but we're in for now um, next let's get the signal cable back here here's my signal cable this was installed a few videos ago I uh, can go back and check it out if you want I'm gonna tie it to the support brackets up here and then run it down the same channel as the weather wiring harness should be fairly self-explanatory I can already tell I'm going to have some problems with the seatbelt, but we'll tackle that when we get there. There is approximately 0% chance that you will be able to see what I'm doing. But, I'm just, if there's a support bracket up there, I'm just loosely tying it to the support bracket for now until we're done figuring this whole thing out. Alright, so now... Somewhere to tie it to back there or no? Oh, what the frick? Oh, you. Come on. Alright. The next challenge, as I expected, is this seatbelt bracket here. Probably hard to see, but the factory wiring harness goes under the seatbelt bracket. And I don't think I'm going to be able to squeeze that through there. So I don't really want to remove the seatbelt, but all right, fine. All right, I'll do it. Got to do it right, I guess. So why am I hesitant about doing this, you ask? Um, that's because all the electronics down there are connected to the restraint system, SRS system, and there's pyrotechnics involved, and if I do it wrong, then they could blow up on my face, and that sounds like a bad day. So, but we'll just do it right and get it done. All right, so to do this properly, turn on the ignition, watch for the airbag light. It should go off after five or six seconds. It did. Cool. So now I just wait another... 30 seconds or so to make sure it doesn't turn back on. Cool. Didn't turn back on. Turn the ignition off. And that's it. So that's just the SRS self-test. If it passes, you're good. Wait a couple minutes for all the electronics to discharge. And then you can start messing with that bracketry. If the airbag light stays on, uh, you have a fault. Don't touch anything probably should take it to a dealer. All right, so so there'll be a, a yellow clip here, or a yellow connector, remove that. Probably can't even see it, but there it is. And then these three bolts are all, uh, what are they? Torx Plus 45. There we go. 
now I can get to the other two. Yep, dip a doo! Holy sh oh, Holy crap! Okay, so. Alright, so expect some torque on these guys. I will put the, the torque ratings on the screen. Is this the world's longest screw? Cool, okay, it's not completely out, but there's enough movement at this point where I can get the cable through. Okay, we're done with this cable. Here it is right here, running along the channel underneath the seatbelt bracket. And it continues along on up and into the back. And the end is right here. So we're ready to go. All right, unfortunately it's gonna rain soon at 4.30, it's currently 4.22. All right, I guess I gotta hurry. Um, so my Bronco that's currently on a trailer, I'm gonna stick back in the Bronco, button everything up for the rain, we'll finish this another day. Oh, retorque your seatbelt. Me, retorque your seatbelt. All right, bye. All right, so it's been a good 14 days since I've been able to work on this. Two weeks, we had rain for a good solid, uh, well, out of the past 14 days, we've had rain for 12 of them. So that sucked, but we're ready to get back into it. Hopefully we'll finish up today. Okay, so next on the list is power. If you got a 21 or 22 like I do, you really only got one choice for your amplifier power, and that's to pull it from the battery. If you have a 2023, um, you do have the factory wiring back here. The problem with the factory wiring is that it's only a 12 gauge wire. So look at your amplifier user manual, make sure 12 gauge is, is sufficient. It should be good for amplifiers up to probably 250, 300 watts, no more than that. Um, if it's more than that and 12 gauge is not enough, you too will have to pull it from the battery like I do. As far as uh, wire gauge goes for this guy, for the 501, it is an 8 gauge wire, that's what they recommend. I think that's probably overkill, I could probably get away with a 10 gauge, but you know, I don't, I don't want an extra crispy Bronco. So I'm just going to follow the recommendation. I don't know if you've been to the hardware store lately, but wire is freaking expensive right now. So what I found actually is a kicker install kit comes with your power wire, your ground wire, and then also a fuse, which is handy. I got this whole thing for 50 bucks. Um, retail, it's like closer to 100 bucks. I don't think it's worth it at 100 bucks, I'll be honest. But at 50 bucks, yeah, that's, that's probably cheaper than what I would have paid for each of these components individually. And everything comes pre-terminated, so I don't have to crimp anything together or, you know, any of that stuff. As for the wire path itself, uh, Ford actually kind of made it somewhat easy for us. We don't have to drill a firewall because they already got a wire grommet. So obviously the power will attach to one of these studs. This one right here is an M6. This guy over here is an M5. I don't know why they're different. Ford, why did you make them different? Doesn't make any sense, but whatever. M6 here, M5 here. Uh, the fuse will be somewhere over here. Don't know where yet exactly. And then the wire grommet. I can get a light down there. The wire grommet is right there. There is where the factory wire grommet goes down on the bottom. There's also a little nub on the top. That's where you will send your wire. If you have an automatic, there will be another grommet somewhere down here. I'll see if I can find a picture online. But there's another grommet down there you can use if you're the, on the manual transmission like I have, it's used. But uh, on the automatic, it's just a little rubber plug. You can cut into that rubber plug if you want and then pass your wire through there. If for whatever reason you don't want to use the driver's side, another one over there on the passenger side um, behind the radiator coolant. Once you're through the grommets, it'll obviously pop out in the footwells. So I'm going down the driver's side. It's going to pop out up here somewhere. 
and I am just going to follow the factory wiring harness all the way back. And then I'll cut over here, again following the factory wire harness, to my sub. If you're buying cable by the foot, it's going to take you roughly 15 feet to get all the way back here on the four door. Um, obviously give yourself 17 to 20 feet in case you make a mistake, because, you know, you don't want to be stuck short. That would, that would suck. So there's effectively zero chance that you'll be able to see what I'm doing inside the engine bay, so you'll just have to trust me, and then once I finish, I'll show you the final result. All right. <sighs> the nerve-wracking part of cutting into your own brand new vehicle. All right, this turned into a huge saga, but got it in. See it down there? Pops out over here. Oh, this is in the way. Pops in up there. I don't know if you can see it or not. Hopefully. All right, so. There was like a billion things I did wrong and only one thing I did right. So I don't even know where to begin. Well, I'll just, I'll just show you what I got. All right, picture time, picture time, picture time, picture time. Good enough. All right, so this is what the grommet looks like. You just have And the factory harness just shoots through right like this, all the way through, and you're fine. This is sealed off here. This is like, this is separated internally somehow. I don't know how, but whatever. This is inside, outside. Okay, so this is the grommet. You have the factory harness coming through right here. This is the grommet you got to get it through. The problem is, is there's like an outer seal here, here, and then there's an inner seal right here. So first thing, logically, what I try to do is just poke through the seal. That obviously worked, but this was too narrow. So I kept increasing the size. I did the screwdriver. I did the flathead. There's another, I don't know what the heck happened to it, but there's a bigger Phillips head that I tried getting through there. It all went through just fine. The problem was, is that I tried to tie the wire to this. So pretend this is the, the blue wire. I tried to tie the wire to this and pull it back through. Didn't work. I tried that one, two, three, four, five. There's, I tried it like a billion times. It just didn't work. So next thing I did is I got a wiring or a piece of uh, string. I got that through. I was intending to use this as like a pull rope. Whoosh. Still didn't work. That is... One of these has a broken string in it. I don't know where it is. Oh, right here. Here's the one with the broken string. That didn't work either. Garbage, just complete garbage. So what I ended up doing eventually after I got frustrated, this was like a three hour deal, by the way. What I did is I just took a razor blade and I sliced off this front cap right here. And I had to take it out of the holder. So I had to use a, use a sharp one slice off the front cap here. I also use this small guy right here. And in order to prevent myself from cutting into the factory wiring harness, I used a metal scraper, 
which I don't even know where the frick it is right now. Is it still in the Bronco? I don't even know. Is it down here still? I don't, it is, it's right here. Okay, so what I did is I stuck the metal scraper right here and that protected the factory wiring harness from my razor blade shenanigans and I just came down and cut that lift off. That allowed me to pass the wire through there. For the inner wire, the inner sheath, whatever, the inner cover, I had to go in there with this little guy and make a bunch of slices into the little wire grommet thing to allow the wire to go through. That eventually let me pass the wire through. Done, thank God. So if you look at this from the Bronco's perspective, right there, like that. Make sense? Hopefully. All right, right here is the remains of that cap that I sliced off. You can see I, I poked several holes in the middle of it, but that wasn't enough. So there's the cap, there's the remains of the cap. But we're through, we're through. Ah, uh, yes, we're through. All right. So now I gotta get the wire to the back. Okay. So we're, we're roughed in. It's not all tied down yet, but it's through there. And all the way across. And you can see, like, it's close. I think, I think this kit came with a 17 foot cable and there's only like maybe a foot and a half, maybe a foot and a half to spare. Like there's not, there's not much to spare at all. So definitely, I know I said 15 feet earlier, I would definitely lean closer to 20 feet just to give you that extra flexibility. All right, so a couple more things before we can actually power this on. So we have the 12 volt line. We're all set for the ground line when the time comes. The last thing is the remote line, which is that REM in the middle there. How that works is when the amplifier sees a 12 volt signal on the remote line, it will turn on this amplifier. It just so happens that the kicker key 204 on one of these pins has a remote out. So I'm going to use the 200.4 to turn on the 500.1. And it just so happens that the plug and play kit, being as awesome as it is, has that remote line already wired and ready to go. It's just bundled up inside the harness right here. So I'm going to go ahead and run another cable to the back for that remote line. And that way I have something to turn on and off that amplifier with. All right. So, got the blue cable out of the wiring harness. So right here, I just had to cut into the harness, get the blue cable out, retape the wiring harness back up. Looks brand new. I'm gonna go ahead and terminate these with crimp on spade wire connectors. Um, and then I will connect it with this wire. This is just general purpose 16 gauge, 18 gauge. What is this? 16 gauge wire. I'm just gonna follow my blue power cable back. Um, the nice thing is I will not have to take out the seatbelt because I don't have connectors on the end of these. And other than that, it's just, it's gonna copy what I did on the other side, so I'm not gonna bother filming it. Uh, but I'll check in once I'm done, and then we'll go ahead and power on the amp, make sure it works. If it does, button everything back together. Okay. I'm gonna put the female end over here, and the mail end on my other cable. Oh, I don't have my crimper. All right, crimper, 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 crimper. Cool. Cool. That's in. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's run it back.
Okay, we're, we're close. Remote line is in. Only two, three, three things left until we can tap this on and test it out. All right, next is ground. Ground's right here. This, I believe, is eight millimeter. It is, because I'm awesome. That's a lie, by the way. I already tried three other sizes and it didn't fit. Okay, next up, fuse. Fuse is right here. This is what came in my kit. This goes up in the battery. So, general best practice. Wow, it's bright up here. Dang sun. General best practice, put the fuse as close to the battery as you can. It just so happens that the this kicker kit actually labels where they want you to put the fuse. So I'm gonna stick it right here. Gotta cut this cable um, and then screw it into both terminals of the fuse box here. I need, I need bigger cutters. Okay. <laughs> Come back. All right, one side is in right here. Let's do the other side. So what you gotta do is get rid of the sheathing. Um, you don't have to actually cut it off. You can just pull it back like that. And then score the insulation. Don't go crazy with the pressure. Otherwise you'll cut into the aluminum strands underneath. You don't wanna do that if you can help it. There we go. I cut a few in them strands, but not many, so we're good there. And then screw it in. Except I lost the Allen key, of course. Where, where the frick did I put it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm an idiot. All right. Cool. Okay, fuse is in. So we're ready to go. This is just a very temporary spot for it right now because I have actually have a fuse block coming in, uh, but that'll be a future video. So this is where it's gonna sit for right now. I'll probably zip tie it to this until that fuse block actually gets here. And one more thing. The last thing is the subwoofer itself, which I got this connector for it. That's a standard Ford connector. You can actually buy the connector. I'll go ahead and put the part number in the description. It's just a pigtail, plugs into that. You can wear it wherever you want. I'm obviously gonna plug it into the kicker key. I did look at this connector and there's no inclination of what pin one is. So let's just plug it in and figure it out. Let's do the bottom two first. Oh, there we go. So that's one voice coil. Bottom two are one voice coil. So that means the top two must be the other voice coil. Yup. And they're not connected internally, right? They are, but it's kill ohms, so they're not really connected. Okay, cool. So the top two, top two are one voice coil, bottom two are the other voice coil. Awesome. All right, I'll go ahead and label it with some electrical tape so I know what the heck is what, and then we'll keep going. So I did white and black for one of them. It's just the standard speaker colors. For the other one, I did red and green, green being ground, red being positive. Well, green being negative, but green is usually ground. Um, so now we're good. Now it's just a matter of hooking it all up. Okay. Dun, 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 Allen key, Allen key. Where the frick is the Allen key? Allen key. Ground, ground goes to ground. Right, 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 right. Yep. Okay, ground and power. Remote. Cool. 
Now for the speakers themselves. All right, so the two positive go together. Get in the same hole. Guess what, I suck. All right. Okay. And the last thing is the signal cable from up front. Okay. Done. We're all wired. Power ground remote, speaker wires, the signal wire that we ran uh, two weeks ago for me, earlier in this video for you guys. So the last remaining thing is to hook up the power and see if it all works. I won't lie, it's kind of nerve-wracking. Because uh, if this doesn't work, then what the heck did I spend the last two months doing? But we'll see. Okay, moment of truth. A little nervous. A little nervous. But let's give it a shot. Power on. Cool. No power. No power? Why is there no power? Ah, oh, come on. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. You gotta plug in the stupid remote turn on line, jackass. Okay, all right. Well, let's go check it now. Oh, look, power. Oh, it's amazing. When you hook it up, it works. It's crazy, all right. All right, check it out. It's working. Sweet, sweet. Okay, well, it works, um, but, um, mm, well, let me turn off the radio, hold on. So, um, it does work. It sounds a lot better. There is a lot more bass. I think a lot of people would be happy with this setup, but, um, honestly, I've been playing around with it for the better part of an hour and a half now, and I'm just, I'm not impressed at all with that subwoofer. So, I think we're gonna have to switch over to the kicker that I bought, that I didn't think I would need. But I guess I do. But that'll have to be a different video because I'm exhausted and this video is probably going to be over an hour as it is. So obviously if you're happy with your setup at this point, put it all back together. <laughs> that sounds like an overwhelming task right now. But put it all back together and you'll be set to go. For me, I'll be back tomorrow. For you guys it'll be a different video. For me it'll hopefully be tomorrow. And we'll get this kicker installed. We'll see how it goes. So yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you want to contact me for any reason, I am on both Bronco Forms, Bronco 6G, and Bronco Nation. My handle's RagnarCon. Feel free to send me any questions you have. If you want me to snap any pictures of anything while my Bronco's in a billion pieces, now would be the time to do it. Um, that's it for now. If for whatever reason you haven't seen my other videos, I have been... I have... I don't even know. Three or four videos on this now. I'll stick a playlist up in the corner. But that'll do it for now. I will catch you all tomorrow. Well, not tomorrow, but you know what I mean. All right, bye. It's times like these when I really, really wish I had a garage so I could just leave everything here and not have to worry about putting it back in the Bronco. But, uh... I don't have one. So, back in the Bronco you go. If anybody has any spare garages, let me know. I could use one.